All right, guys, so it is a beautiful day out here. We're gonna be doing some cleanup on the property today. We've already started a little bit, um, but as well, we are going to be um, going to somebody else's house and, and helping out, um, you know, pruning some things up and just trying to see what we can do for them uh, to help them and, or maybe give them some more ideas or set them up in some type of way to give them more production or more organic production. But you never know what you're gonna run into, so what we're gonna be able to help them with. This Georgia Bell Peach is doing so good in this spot right here. These things are like 10 feet tall now, and uh, so I'm gonna have to get up there and prune these down this year, come winter. But I planted these and they were so tiny, I don't know if you guys remember, they weren't even as tall as me, and I'm five foot. They've grown over five foot in the last six months that is insane guys that is just beautiful we're gonna lop off some of these lower branches this one is actually leaning i'm gonna get a rock like i did the apricot over there and i'm gonna tie it up and i'm gonna lean it back this way and get it straight because actually some of these branches on the bottom i don't want to cut off because they're really nice branches this one however has some crazy branches that are all lopsided so we're gonna cut some of these off. Sorry if you can't hear me right now because of that air conditioner unit over there, condenser. Um, but here we are. We're gonna cut these off and I'm gonna show you what it looks like afterwards. So let me back up. There's a huge tree. It's grown so much this year, it's insane. All right, so we cleaned her up pretty well. Um, yeah, it is a little bit one-sided over here, but at the same time, we're gonna have some shoots and some branches going out that way, so I'm not too worried about it. Um, but we got that cleaned up for now. All those branches are laying down around the base of it. Um, this one right here, we got some low ones, and I am going to take out a couple of these real low ones, but I'm going to wait till winter to do it because they're not all drooping down. Um, so we're going to, we're going to go ahead and wait till winter to really prune this one up because there's no fruit on it. We don't have to worry about shade, anything getting shaded out or anything. So it's all just, you know, building those roots. Oh, a butterfly. How awesome is that? But uh, yeah, so you know, we're just gonna let it keep photosynthesizing and building roots and doing really awesome. Um, so come this winter, this thing's gonna be super established. Next year, I think these peaches are gonna give us maybe a couple hundred peaches all together. I mean, this year we got about 40 peaches, 50 peaches all together between the three peach trees. See the nectarine down there? We're gonna keep the nectarine nice and low for the kids to be able to pick from. But these I want to keep, you know, at normal height, good height, so we can we can uh, have some good spread on them and get really good production on them. They're in a great spot. I couldn't have picked a better spot on my at my house. So, but as you can see, the yard is just full of grass, guys. We are going to be taking care of that here in the next few months. We are going to be taking cardboard. We're going to come through here with cardboard and lay cardboard out through the entire yard then we're going to recover it with a small layer of wood chips and we're going to kill off all of that grass and get it looking really nice and pretty all right guys so we're here helping someone do um some awesome stuff her name is charlotte which is actually candace's mother the one that we got the uh, lemon trees from um, I'm over here and she has uh, some awesome stuff going on here um, a lot of her land is like you know just grass and everything but she's got a beautiful landscape just out here on the lake I mean it is just awesome to be out here um, right on the other side of this and let me show you is where she has a lot of her stuff growing or at least some of her stuff going, there's a peach tree right here, right on the edge of the forest. She says it, it just produces awesome peaches. 
I'm like, man, this is awesome. I'm um, just showing how this system can work, you know, right next to nature, right next to the edge of, uh, you know, some taller trees, you know, on an understory almost. Really cool. Um, it's not exactly next to a forest, but it is next to a whole bunch of taller trees, which is really awesome. Um, she's got her blueberries right here, and the blueberries are doing wonderful. And then this fig tree. If you guys notice, this fig tree on one side of it is completely uh, dead looking. She said it just happened this year, and we're not sure exactly what's going on. If you guys have any uh, comments that you can, you know, see and check that out and let me know what that might could possibly be. There is a ton of ants in the bottom of it. I'm wondering if that could be an issue. You can see a whole bunch of ants there. And so, but it's super cool. It's coming together. She has mimosas growing all throughout the property. Sorry about that car. I'm not sure if you can hear me, but she has mimosas. So this is a peach tree. And then this is a huge, huge mimosa, which has been pollarded several times. It's been pollarded, which means it's been chopped off, lopped off right there. And she's got other mimosas um, back there. You can't really see them next to the lake, but this is how you do it. You put the mimosa, this is a little bit close to have it uh, next to this, next to this peach tree. Yeah, I would have it a little bit further back, but these are the nitrogen fixers. These are the pioneer plants. You plant them close. And I would also, I would lop it off a little bit higher. Um, that way it doesn't interfere so much going sideways because it'll spread out sideways after you lop it off like that. So I'd, I'd lop it a little bit higher so it doesn't actually bother everything else. So what I did was I'm taking all this material, I've cut it all up. These are mimosa leaves. This is all full of nitrogen. All these leaves are full of nitrogen. They are nitrogen fixers. They fix nitrogen into themselves and they fix nitrogen into the soil. And it's fixed nitrogen into the, into the soil over there by that peach tree. This is the other peach tree right here. As you can see, I've been chopping and dropping all of this mimosa leaves and branches right around this peach tree which is gonna to start to build the soil around it. And that's how you do it. You design how the forest falls with the pioneering plants that are fixing nitrogen into the soil so that you can have better fruit production in a more sustainable way. All right, guys, so we're back from Charlotte's house. Um, I don't know if you guys can tell, but we've done a little bit of work here. Um, this is all the weeds that we pulled out, or that's just one pile. There's another pile over there and another pile over there. We put some work in today on our own property and we've left these beautiful mimosas right here and they're closed up right now because it's about to get dark. We have mimosas growing in our yard just like she had over at her house next to the peach tree. These are the ones that I, I told my wife, you know, when we were when we were cleaning up all of this on the sidewalk to keep these mimosas because these are the pioneers. These are the nitrogen fixing plants that are going to give us some amazing fertilization for all of our fruit producing plants. While we were over there, she found a baby moonflower plant. Now, if you can see on this one, it has a small seed. So I just planted this and watered it so it'll start to perk up. But it has a small seed and the seed looks like a lychee. Where is it? Oh, there it is. This one's a small one. They get huge, but it has a beautiful flower that only blooms at night. I wanted one. She gave it to us. We put it in the rock garden. I think it's gonna be awesome once everything in the rock garden gets established with the olive tree, the moon gar or the moon flower, the agave in the pot. We're gonna have a few other things that we plant in here. I think it's gonna go really well with them. Um, guys, everything's looking good. We're getting it all situated. Our basketball goal broke, uh -uh -uh. but we will get it fixed. Or, no, sorry, we're not gonna get it fixed. We're gonna get rid of it because one of the pieces is completely broken. And 
Um, you know, we're just gonna start anew. And it's gonna be all right. But though, all right, so this is a new development. Man, I'm, there's a lot developing here. I'm gonna take out all these limbs that I put around this square part right here. I'm gonna start a vegetable garden right here in this square area where somebody was doing vegetable gardening before. I'm gonna line it with these that I was going to line the driveway with and the surrounding property. I'm no longer going to do that. I'm going to line it uh, around this area and I'm gonna start my vegetable garden here. So I'll have a proper border to start it in. Um, everything else, we're, all the perennials, we're gonna put sporadically through here. We're gonna do some annual production, so I'm thinking. Um, right here, we're gonna have the one, two, and maybe a third longer row down there for some vegetable production. We're gonna have vegetable production right here in the front, and then we're also gonna have vegetable production in the back. So three different places we're gonna have vegetable production. The rest is all gonna be perennials, herbaceous plants, fruiting plants, and all that good stuff. So until next time, all life is sacred. Remember that. I'll see you there.